Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. In light of the recent review done on VRC's McLaren MP422, I thought it might do us some good to have a look at that car's immediate successor, the McLaren MP423. However, because there are currently no mods of the MP423 available for Assetto Corsa, I thought the next best thing might be to have a look at my 118th scale version by Mini Champs. We're going to take a look at this wonderful model as well as talk a little bit about the history of the car as well as the 2008 Formula One season. The MP423 is, of course, McLaren's 2008 World Championship entry for the Formula One season. It was Basically, a development and evolution of the MP422 from the previous year. The 422, despite being excluded from the Constructors' Championship, was a very good car, and arguably it would have won the 2007 Constructors' Championship had everything been allowed to remain as it was without interference from the FIA and their $100 million fine. However, due to the fact that McLaren had a very good baseline established by the MP422, the 423 is a logical development thereupon. The design of this car was overseen by Patty Lowe, Neil Oatley, Tim Goss, and Doug McKiernan. Over the course of the season, the team led by those four gentlemen developed this car into what we see before us. And of course, this model being largely based off of the launch spec doesn't feature a lot of the aero appendages that eventually did make their way onto the MP423. There were cannard wings mounted in the midsection of the car there, like we've seen on the F2007 and like we've seen on the MP422 as well. But here you can see on the model, everything is just pretty much a clear profile leading from the nose tip into the cockpit. Tactical specifications on the car. The chassis, it is a molded carbon fiber honeycomb monocoque composite structure, as you would expect from the era. Suspension, front and rear, upper and lower wishbones, and push rods. Par for the course in the mid-2000s there. Nobody playing with pull rods quite yet in Formula 1. The engine was a development of that Mercedes-Benz 2.4 liter V8, 90 degree bank angle on that engine. It was the Mercedes-Benz FO108V for 2008. The transmission, a McLaren 7-speed plus reverse semi-automatic paddle shift unit, hand-operated clutch as well via paddles on the steering wheel. Fuel and lubricants provided by Mobile One, as you can definitely see there from the sponsorship branding on the engine cover. 19,000 RPM rev limit on that engine. That was legally mandated by the FIA for 2007 and 2008. That would be progressively bumped down again to 18,000 RPM beginning in 2009, and that continued all the way up to 2013 with the closeout of the 2.4 liter V8 era. The tires for the second year, Formula One was running these controlled compound Bridgestone Potenza grooved tires. Bridgestone became the only tire supplier in Formula One at the end of the 2006 season, and 2008 was the last year for these grooved tires. Between 1998 and 2008, these grooves were put into the tires to control mechanical grip to limit cornering speeds. However, for 2009, with a raft of aerodynamic changes, cornering speeds would be further reduced still. Therefore, the FIA said, let's bring back slicks. So for 2009 and continuing all the way up now into 2018, Formula One has run slicks yet again. Competition history on the MP423, it was only raced by Vodafone, McLaren Mercedes at the time. It was driven by Lewis Hamilton and Heike Kovalainen in cars 22 and 23, respectively. The car made its debut at the 2008 Australian Grand Prix, which it won in fine style. It was entered in 18 races, all 18 rounds of the 2008 Formula One World Championship. It won six of them. It took podium positions in 13 of them. It took eight pole positions and three fastest laps. Why do we remember it? It won Lewis Hamilton his first Drivers' Championship. He won that 2008 title by one point over Ferrari's Felipe Massa at an absolutely sensational close to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Rain affected late in the day. Felipe Massa truly did win the World Championship for about 28 seconds or so, but Timo Glock threw it off the road, and that gave Lewis Hamilton the P5 he needed to get the point advantage over Felipe Massa, literally in the final corner of the season. I still have yet to see a more sensational finish to a Grand Prix, let alone a season. However, that is what we've got here on the McLaren MP423. Let's have a look at what Mini Champs have been able to do with their 118th scale rendition of this car. As you can see, it is very nicely finished. 
First of all, the car more or less represents a launch spec version of this car. When the companies who make these models start to do their initial research for their works for a given year. They basically only have the launch spec cars to work with because they have to make all of the molds and all the tooling processes required to make these things en masse. So essentially launch spec is the only thing that these companies have to play with. Be that as it may, this car does not quite represent all of the aerodynamic developments that did occur on the 423 throughout the course of 2008. Namely, you'll see that the midsection of the front end of the car is absent of any canard wings or anything like that. This car did feature some extensive canard wings later on in the season, but they were notably absent from the launch spec. What is present here though, and this is something that you won't find on models of the MP422, most of them anyway, is the bridge wing. This was introduced on the 422 at the Spanish Grand Prix in 2007, and that wing was then carried over into 2008 to great effect. And really, it is a very complex front wing in terms of its aerodynamic design and its overall structure. It's very impressive that many champs were able to put that together for us. In terms of the bargeboard detail here and the front section of the floor, certainly you can see that there is quite a lot of development work going on here. Have a look at where the floor comes into the front section of the car, just below those primary barge boards. Very intricate geometries, quite fragile, I must say, in terms of handling the model, but very nicely replicated indeed. Having a better look at the barge boards from above, you can definitely tell that Minichamp spared no detail whatsoever in trying to replicate those very complex geometries as much as possible. Moving across to the midsection of the car, here are those turning vanes and flow modifiers that we saw on the MP422. They've just been refined a bit here for the 423, but the overall design and the overall philosophy is the same. You can see here these little winglets just in front of those flow modifiers to go across the rear tires to smooth out that turbulence. The chimneys lead very nicely and actually quite sharply. They come to a point here. It's actually somewhat sharp to the touch. They come across those winglets just to condition that airflow, generate some vortices there across those winglets that feed the air over the rear tires. Engine cover is largely unchanged over the MP422, but you can see that we have some development going on here. Just these very gradual strakes coming down from the Mobile One logo there and then across to the pseudo shark fin that you can see on the car. Very, very cool detail. The airbox snorkel area pretty much unchanged as well from the MP422. Cockpit detail on this model is quite nice. First of all, on the sides here, you can see the improved cockpit surround that we got for 2008. You can see now that the sides of the cockpit surround, this is actually part of the monocoque. It is not just part of the foam padding that goes around the cockpit opening. This is an actual section on the monocoque that comes up basically to the driver's eye level. So I remember back in 2008, the drivers were complaining a little bit that it limited their peripheral vision to some extent, but as we've seen in some pretty serious accidents, namely the accident that Sergio Perez had in Monaco, I believe it was 2011 or so, it was a big lateral impact at the new chicane and uh, he came out unscathed from that that cockpit bolstering keeping his head under control during those high G maneuvers there in the accident itself so certainly that cockpit bolstering has helped significantly in terms of the other details on the model you can see these little flow modifiers on either side of that cockpit surround very very cool just these little winglets right in here. Very nice to see. Of course, sponsorship logos here. You can see Vodafone. Vodafone were in their second year of being McLaren's title sponsor. And then you can see Lewis Hamilton's name and the Hugo Boss logo there. Very, very nice. Additionally, you can see the Marshall kill switch for the car's ignition system. Very cool. And then Mercedes-Benz Mobile One and Santander, as you might expect from McLarens of the era. Very, very nice. Moving around to the rear side of the cockpit, we can start to see now some more cockpit detail in here. Very nicely modeled steering wheel. There's not much else to see though in the cockpit, generally speaking, simply because, well, these Formula One cockpits are definitely very closely guarded secrets. Even though we can see them on television, it is somewhat an area of sensitivity for the teams nowadays. So. Definitely, they're trying to keep as many secrets alive as they can in there. 
nonetheless, once the car comes around again, now that I can actually get to the switch on the base of the dirt table, yes, we can get a look at the steering wheel detail. Very, very cool. It is quite dark in there. We don't really see too much in the way of details on the side of the car, so we don't see a chassis plate, we don't see an FIA homologation sticker in this cockpit, but we do see a steering wheel, and we do see a dashboard in there. No decals on the dashboard itself, but you can see the little carbon binnacle where those LCDs would be mounted. Again, have a look at the MP422 review to get an idea of the overall dash configuration. It really didn't change between 2007 and 2008. Another detail on the car, in terms of the model, the steering does work. So I'm turning the front wheels right now with my hand, and you can see that the steering wheel is linked to the front axle. Very, very nice there. Always like that detail. And then, of course, the helmet and suit detail on Lewis Hamilton in here. Bright yellow helmets that he ran at the time, complete with the Mercedes and Vodafone branding. Very, very nice. And then, of course, you can see the branding on his suit. Very nice in there. The seat belts in here, as you can see, they are not quite photo etched and they're not quite painted. They're almost a hybrid. It's a raised section there, particularly on the central buckle right in there. But uh, the seat belts themselves, that you can see going across his lap there, they are painted on. Across to the rear section of the car. Very, very nice details once again. Having a look at the rear end treatment on a modern Formula One car is always a very interesting thing. And here we go. Rear wing, of course, similar to what we see on the MP422. Again, only one year between these two cars, but you can see the exhaust mounted there. 2.4 liter V8, remember, two banks of cylinders, so one collector pipe for each bank of cylinders. And then, of course, you can see that they have angled those exhausts to blow across the rear suspension somewhat. Additionally, it looks like that they are trying to work the airflow, that charged exhaust flow, from the exhaust themselves coming out of the primary uh, exhaust pipes coming down the center line of the chassis and then to to blow this little flow modifier here this is not a monkey seat you can see that it does not actually have a main plane section but this little almost tuning fork type device there unique to the mp423 as far as i am able to tell but definitely interesting flow dynamics going on here Additionally, you can see the pylons here supporting the rear wing. No DRS in this era, so no hydraulics going to the rear wing at this point. And then the rear crash structure here, which is a rather substantial structure. It goes from the rain light all the way up to the back of the gearbox here on the chassis. So very substantial structure. This, of course, is a crushable structure trying to absorb as much energy as they can from a rear end collision. Additionally, at the very bottom here, you can see the beam wing. Very nicely sculpted, I must say. Got to get above it a little bit to see its profile laterally, but very nicely sculpted. And then coming back down here to the diffuser area. Very complex diffuser. It's very similar, once again, to what we saw on the MP422, but just a little bit more honed, a little bit more sophisticated, given the extra year of development time between that car and this one. Of course, you can see the rear suspension here, double wishbone, push rod. Moving across to the side of the car. Once we get it turning, there we go. Very, very nice geometries here coming across the three quarter view. This is the left side of the car looking across the reference plane toward the front. Just have a look at how sculpted that side pod is. McLaren always were at the forefront of aerodynamic design in this era and this notwithstanding this is really tremendous work done here by mclaren and tremendous work done here by mini champs to model this so well honestly the model looks just as impressive as the real car and well that's really what it should be very very nice indeed there's not a bad angle to look at this car from i am convinced additionally moving farther forward you can see the midsection barge board detail once again and the front wheels. This is an area of interest. You can see you can't actually see all that much of the front wheels themselves. They're covered up by this fairing here. The idea of this was to help extract some air through the wheels, through the rim structure, trying to cool the brakes a little bit more as well as to smooth out the turbulence that comes in from having that concave structure across the front wheels there. 
You'll notice that there are no such structures on the rear. However, some teams did run them in 2008 as well. These wheel fairings, as we called them, came out in 2007, trying to extract that air through the wheel to accelerate and energize that flow. They were banned after 2009, but in 2009, you'll see teams like Toyota, Williams, and Braun, for example, running those same wheel fairings. Moving further across to the front section of the car, here is honestly my favorite detail on the whole thing, the front wing. It's a very intricate, very nice structure, and really, many champs did a very good job modeling it. It looks somewhat simple in terms of the main plane there, but you can see we've got a double element main plane with that deep dish spoon section, and then you've got that bridge wing running across the top. Very nicely done. Notice on the model, and this is not entirely true in terms of how the car truly looked in reality, but right between the top section of the bridge wing and the, and the top of the nose cone, there would have been a carbon stay just sitting in there to keep the upper element of that bridge wing from flexing downward too much as the download increased, as the car's speed increased. What used to happen here, and we mentioned this in the 422 review, is that this bridge wing would flex downward quite significantly at speed, and the other team started to say, hey, that's a movable aerodynamic device, you can't have that. And McLaren just introduced a little carbon stay to go between the tip of the nose and the top section of that bridge wing to mitigate that flex a little bit. Many champs did not bother to model that, but other than that, most of the details here, at least on launch spec, are here. It's very, very nice. Across the front end of the chassis, you can see the double wishbone push rod suspension in the front. I really like the cutout section of the chassis where you can see the push rod going up into the top section of the chassis under there. The dampers, of course, would be mounted. Very nice detail to see. And just in general, the fit and finish on this model is really, really good. This truly is one of the nicest that I have. You can see the paintwork, that deep chrome, highly reflective, and then, of course, the red for the Vodafone logos. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Going to the midsection of the car, looking from the front, you can see the radiator inlets there. Very highly sculpted, as you might expect. I don't think... Nope, spoke too soon. There is radiator detail in there. You might just be able to see it. But... Look at how small, comparatively speaking, the radiator openings are relative to the overall sides, the overall size of the side pod. Now, this is just the model, and obviously the teams would have had control over those radiator openings, but interesting what many champs chose to do here in terms of their modeling, their architectural decisions here on the car. Also notice that the radiator openings themselves on the model are asymmetrical. The one on the right side of the car, screen left, is roughly square in its appearance. But if we go on to the right side of the screen, the left side of the car, you can see that this one is very oblong, almost teardrop shaped in its appearance. So we have asymmetrical radiator openings on this car. I don't know why many champs chose to do that, but they have done it. In any regard, the MP423, it is a very cool car. It's a very cool model. And up to this point, it is still the last McLaren to win a world championship. No, it did not win the Constructors' Championship. The last time McLaren won the Constructors was in, two, was in 1998. So 2008, already 10 years away from McLaren's last Constructors' Championship. And now in 2018, McLaren have not won a Constructors' Championship in 20 years. That's pretty incredible. And of course, we all know the trouble that McLaren have been in since the start of the 2015 season with their partnership with Honda. Hopefully this year with Renault Power, McLaren will be coming into a little bit of a resurgence, but all of that remains to be seen. Can they get the car reliable? Can they get the car fast and reliable? That's really the litmus test. We'll see when winter testing starts up. But until then, we have the glory days of old to remember, and cars like this, the MP423, the last McLaren to win a world championship of any kind. He brought Lewis Hamilton his first driver's championship, and now, 10 years later, Lewis Hamilton is a four times world champion. So in many ways, this is the car that started it all. This is the car that cemented Lewis Hamilton in the upper echelon of motorsport. And definitely McLaren themselves will be looking back on this car, maybe for some inspiration in 2018. However, that was a look at my 118th scale by Mini Champs, McLaren MP423. I hope you enjoyed that one for Ironman 601, saying thank you very much for watching, and we will see you soon.